Hello, welcome back to Lorenzo's space program. It's called Planting Flags and we're on our way to Minmus. In the last video I showed you how we launched the rocket. Unfortunately, the video before that showing it in great detail and also the orbit expanding and trajectory intercept planning was lost to the deepness, the deepness of computer hard drives. I don't know, it was lost. Anyway, in the next video, when I'll be planning a trajectory, maybe even in this one, I'll be explaining the maneuvers node system properly. For now, what you have seen is an angry, angry captain launching a ship, being frustrated with it, exploding several times, and then just telling you it went into orbit. This is good enough for any space program, Russian, American, or otherwise. Maybe it's more of a North Korean program. You just get a man telling you it worked. This is what you're getting here with me. It worked and we're up in space now. The trajectory here, we're leaving Kerbin. The blue one is our current trajectory. Here it gives me an intercept with Minmus at about 300 kilometers. The purple trajectory here is what we are going to end up with after our Minmus encounter because an encounter with a celestial body will alter your orbit. It will pull on you. Uh, when we're here on the Earth, the gravity is pulling on you. It's sticking you to the ground. When you're in space and not quite hitting it, it will still pull on you and it will alter your trajectory. Kind of like, no, kind of like nothing on Earth. You can't make a metaphor. Maybe a, a iron tennis ball passing by a big magnet, but that's not something that happens in everyday life either, so it's not a very good analogy. Anyway, we are going to get to Minmus and there we are going to establish Minmus orbit and land and plant a flag. Finally, 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 here in the, how many is Fourth? Yes, fourth episode of Planting Flags, or part two of the third episode, I don't know. We're going to fast forward time until we are at Minmus. And as you can see here, it will be four days. So we will need to accelerate time quite a lot. We are at, let's see, a thousand times now. So four days divided by a thousand, I don't know, we're going to 10,000 times here and now it's going quite fast. So you can see we're slowing, we're nearing the, the uh, apoapsis of our curve, it's the top, and there we're going of course a lot slower. If we bring up the navel, we're only traveling at 150 meters per second relative to Kerbin. And let's reduce time warp now and have a quick peek at the marvels of space. Look, here we are, and I think there is a button to remove, yes, the UI. And there is nothing near us, only the sun and way in the distance, and that's there, that there is Kerbin. We are far away from it. And here we have, of course, our Minmus lander stage. This bit is going to land on Minmus. This bit is going to remain in orbit, waiting for our brave Kerbonaut to return to it. At least we hope he will. So I'll bring the UI back. And let's look at the map view and fast forward time again. 100 times is not nearly enough because it's still about two days. You see, most of the distance was covered in a short amount of time. This top of the arc will take a long, long time because we're going really, really slow. Even here at the apoapsis, we'll be, we will be almost stationary. Well, almost stationary, let's see how fast we will be there. We're at 60 meters per second, so that's still breaking the speed limits everywhere except in Germany, where you can go as fast as you like. So, almost stationary for space terms, because as you might know, in space everything goes really fast. Well, yeah, everything everything just goes really fast. Here is Minmus approaching and here is us approaching it. So now we are entering the sphere of influence of Minmus and you can see it's like an ice cream cone. The sphere of influence is basically a mathematical abstraction. You see the trajectory has changed even though we have not used our rockets. The trajectory has in fact not changed but it's now being drawn relative to Minmus. First it was being drawn relative to Kerbin and you can see here which will be our trajectory after we encounter Minmus. This is basically our trajectory relative to Kerbin. This one here is relative to Minmus. So in this representation, Minmus is stationary. And we know it's, it's not, but it's a good way to represent our trajectory because we want to go there. Also, under the hood of the game, in this scenario now, only Minmus's gravity works. This may sound like a massive abstraction causing complete unreality. While the true universe is more sophisticated, more complicated than that, it is a very good uh, approximation. Gravity falls off quadratically. Exponentially is a good word. It falls off exponentially. So we're way farther from Kerbin and the Sun than we are from Minmus. So just counting Minmus as gravity is actually a fairly good approximation. Might not seem like that, but it is. It's so good that it's the same. The NASA for the moon missions use the same kind of math. So we can trust in that. Here, we want to establish orbit around Minmus first, and as you can see, the trajectory we have now is just going to pass it by. 
and then end back up around Kerbin. This is what this yellow line represents. This is our orbit after we meet Minmus. We want to stay here for a bit, so we're going to plan a maneuver. We're going to burn at our lowest point. This is the most efficient, because we will be closest to Minmus. Its gravity will have done most of the work for us, for us already. And at this point, we are going to slow down. We're going to get, grab the uh, yellow marker with a cross in it, indicating retrograde. So we're going to pull on it, and we are going to make a hypothetical burn that will slow us down. You can see here in the dotted lines, this will be our trajectory after this hypothetical burn. Slowing it down, and you can imagine it will be a circle in a bit. It's closing down into a circle, and if we do this, we will have established Minmus orbit. We want it to be a lower orbit, though, so we're going to drag it a bit further. This is a, we want to, yes, let's make it a circular orbit as near as we can, because that will make the eventual rendezvous with our space part better, because after we land, we are going to have to rendezvous with our rocket. So we have 350 and 291, that will have to do. So, we can see here now, next to our nav ball, we ha have to, going to have to expend 199.1 meters per second of delta V. This is how much we need to change our velocity to attain this orbit. We are going to have to do it in 2 hours and 11 minutes. This is when we will be at the proper point in the trajectory to perform this burn. This here is Minmus. You can see it seems almost the same size as Kerbin, even though we are very much closer to it. It is a small, small moon. These hypothetical maneuvers, they'd show up on the nav ball as a blue icon. So I'm going to look for the blue icon by turning the ship around and going to align it, the ship with it, before engaging the time warp because we do not want to be waiting for two hours. This is too long. So we are aligned here with our uh, planned hypothetical maneuver. In the in the map, you all I did was plan the maneuver. No rockets were fired. This is a great tool in this game. In the meantime, I'm going to accelerate time. This is a great tool in this game because it allows you to do complicated space maneuvers without knowing the orbital mathematics, which I do not. I know the principles, but I do not know the math. This tool, it doesn't do the work for you. You still have to understand how the how the planets work, how the orbits move, and what you need to do to intercept the planets. However, it does one very important thing for you. It calculates everything for you, and it lets you do it through sliders and moving the icons around. So even if you have no idea what you're doing, if you have no idea what the math is like, you can still get it by trial and error. And through doing this, you will learn the principles of orbits, orbital mechanics, and trajectories, which is a great bonus. It's an amazing system, really, for um, simplifying, but not oversimplifying, a very complicated procedure, because I'll tell you, orbital mechanics is so intuitive, so difficult, that in the beginning of the days of the space program, many experts were convinced that a orbital rendezvous between two spacecraft was practically impossible. You just couldn't do it, the calculations were too precise. And as you might know, we're doing it quite routinely now in real life and of course in the game as well. Our burn time is coming up in 10 minutes. I'm going to reduce time warp when we reach it. Five, we don't want to miss it because if we miss it, we're just going to shoot straight out into space yet and we want to plant a flag on this icy, icy rock. It's supposed to be icy anyway. So our burn is in 15 seconds. I'm going to start now. There we go. I'm going to start a little bit early because this maneuver node, the math here, it counts on the all of the impulse being applied at an um, infinitely small point of time. This is not something that actually exists, so we need to do a little bit of the burn before the, uh, the planned burn time and a little bit after to approximate that instantaneous delivery of power. So here we are. We don't care where the flag ends up, so we don't need to be meter per second precise. And if all went well, we are now in orbit of Minmus. And so we are. We have a 330 kilometer apoapsis and a 260 kilometer periapsis. This is good enough for our purposes. What is going to happen now? In first a quick save, because if things crash again I will tell you that everything went great and then proceed to this quick save. Our astronaut, Ed Bass Kerman, is in this this command pod here. He's, this is the this is to be the moon excursion module. It has to fly to the moon and land on it, which, by the way, I'm not sure if we'll be able to do it with the fuel remaining. But this bit here, you can see it's really tiny, is the Minmus excursion module. The 
Minus has a very low amount of gravity, so we don't need a lot of fuel. We have three tiny engines and, of course, the lander lags. He is going to have to get in there. So first thing, he's going to leave his command pod, and here he is. Happily, bravely climbing on the outside of the spacecraft. The door. Where is the door of this thing? Is, of course, because this has been designed by a pro, by me, the door is on the other side. So he's going to have to do a little spacewalk. Let go. Energy is your rocket packs. Look. And I think he has lights as well. Yes. Look. This is our spaceship and he is floating next to it. This is very dangerous because if you press the wrong button and fire your rockets in the wrong way, you go floating off into space and it can be quite difficult indeed to get back into your spacecraft. This has rockets but not nearly enough to make it to either Kerbin or Minmus. Well, from here he would make it to Minmus, but he would crash on it. So, we need our rocket, grabs the ladder, and enter the crew hatch. Board it. So, nothing may have... It seems that nothing may have changed, but our crewman at Best Kerman is now in this capsule. There is a docking port, and we are going to undock it. Decouple node. So now, this one here is left unmanned. In space, in orbit, it carries all the fuel, the parachutes for returning to Kerbin and everything. So it's going to be vital that Adbas has the capability to return here. Wait, can we even... Oh, look, we're, we're, we, are, we as the player are controlling the unmanned one, whereas Adbas is controlling the manned one. Fortunately, we can switch this and now we are controlling the unmanned one. Look, it's very small, it's very nimble, and it has three tiny engines and Adbas is looking out the window. So, first things first, we are going to get away from our main ship. We don't want to damage it with any rocket exhaust. Wait, why isn't our rocket firing? The staging didn't work. We have to activate the engine manually, which we are happy to do. Of course, we need all three of them active. And throttle, yes. Moving away from this ship. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plan a trajectory. We see here now the blue trajectory is ours, the grey one is that of the unmanned ship here. It's, we're still very close so we are not getting a separate icon. We're going to add a maneuver that will bring us right close to the surface of Minmus. 35 kilometers is still too high. 7 kilometers, that sounds like a challenging height because remember Minmus also has mountains. So if we go too low, we will smash into it. Look, this is our, our Munimi, that's what I called it, the main ship. And in this thing, Adbas has no chance of ever getting home. So it's vitally important that later he will be able to get back to the main ship. For now though, our planned maneuver is taking place in 7 minutes. So I'm going to time warp ahead. And I really hope this has enough thrust. And where is Minmus? Ah, oh, there it is, I lost it. I hope this, these rockets have enough thrust and fuel to land on Minmus. This is important. Although we only need 25 meters per second to lower our orbit by 300 kilometers. This indicates how small Minmus is. It has no gravity. So fire the engines and cut them again. A small burst. You can see we're moving away from our main ship and our orbit now is really low. We're at 12 kilometer Periapsis highest point. So my plan here is to get down here, go over, oh look at it, so we have a lake here, this is very flat, and here we will break and just move down to the surface. There is one problem, or it could be a problem, this ship is really small. The gyroscope in the command pod to control its attitude is quite powerful, so if I steer, look, it steers every which way, it's very agile. This is a problem when making precision landings, but we'll see how that goes. First, we are going to time warp until we are at the... Wait, I'm going to put a plant maneuver here over the sea so we can see how far that is. It's two hours away and I'm going to hypothetically remove all my speed at that point. So I want to land there. How's that for a hypothetical? It's 147 meters per second only. So I'm now going to accelerate time until we get close to that point. Look, we're moving so slowly. We're doing only 40 meters per second relative to... Minmus, that's just allowable highway speed, really. So, accelerating time quite a lot, 
to get over with this descent and we're at 30 kilometers now we're oh we're coming over the night side that might be a problem because it makes landing rather difficult indeed or we might be uh, landing over a sunset look we are very close to the planet even though we are only well planet a moon even though we're only 13 kilometers above it we can still just see around it it's very very small indeed look that's the sun there about to come up about to rise over the minmus horizon very good now in these close approaches it's good to watch here the vertical speed readout this is this uh, basically gives you the speed this here this orbital speed gives you the speed relative to the center of the body and this speed gives it relative to sea level so we're still descending but not very fast about 10 meters per second we're almost at our lowest point now in the map view we made our hypothetical maneuver that would put us right in the flat icy sea this is uh, pointing here and this is, we reach this burn point in four minutes so in four minutes we are going to we're still in orbit at this point we will still never fall down but in four minutes we are going to reduce our speed so much oh look it's the it has rotated a bit so we need to move it forward yes in only two minutes not four at all we are going to reduce our speed so much that we will be falling down to the surface and we will be making a landing hopefully at least and when it's landed at Bass is going to be the first German of its kind of this space program to plant a flag on a celestial body look there is the lake this in a bit will become down we're just next to it now kind of so we need to do our burn in nine seconds this is a good flat area we want to land here not in these mountains it's very very difficult to land in the mountains as you might imagine so here we are we're going to reduce our speed by doing a quick rocket burn Look, now the game is recognizing I'm going for a landing and it turns the planet as being down what a great game I'm going to switch my speed indicator to a surface indicator here it says now orbit it gives the speed relative to the center we want the speed relative to the surface because of course we want to zero out our speed relative to the surface because we're going to for a landing you see it's a little bit different our surface relative speed is 50 meters per second whereas our orbital speed is 61 this is because minus is also rotating um, the surface uh, you can see it's rotating with the direction of travel with the orbit so if you go for a surface speed readout it will be lower than the orbital readout it can also be higher when you're orbiting against its movement of rotation so if we take a peek at the map view you can see we are now on a well we could call it a landing course but for now it is a crash course we are going to plummet right down into the center and still this will take a long long time we are at only 50 meters per second and we have 12 kilometers to go well i suppose that would take a few minutes too long for a video so here comes the time warp coming in to the minima surface and before we do i'm going to put in on quick save because if I, muck, if I muck it up I'm going to cheat and say I did it anyway no not really but the programs can crash if Adbass crashes he crashes and there is no flag but if something on my computer crashes that doesn't count then I can use the save game yes that's the rule from now on save games can only be used if it's due to a dumb stupid computer crash I think that's a good rule so pointing the ship now in the retrograde direction and I'm going to scrub a little bit of speed not all of it because we're not on the ground yet but I think a hundred meters per second is a little bit reckless also we are over our landing spot so we want to be zeroing out our horizontal velocity we want this uh, reticule this retrograde icon to be on top here that means we are going straight down because as you can imagine for a landing it's oftentimes good to go straight down and not go come in careening at an angle so I'm going to press this caps lock puts the controls in precision mode which basically makes them less responsive which is good for a vessel this small so I'm braking these are tiny rockets you can barely see their exhaust I'm at 50 meters per second now 40 30 and that's about good enough 25 we are a bit more upright so we are almost um, we are almost going straight down I'm going to in fact going to burn a little bit sideways to make that to to get rid of all the horizontal velocity here so let's see how that went yes the indicator is almost at the top here
When you look at the nav ball, you can sort of chase these indicators around by burning using your reticule. We're getting quite low now, we're at 1500 meters, meter, 1500 meters of altitude. And this does not have to be the actual altitude because the um, this does not have to be sea level. And of course on a frozen moon like this, sea level is hard to gauge. But this altitude is not necessarily the altitude above surface. So, it's an indication. I'm going to... We're slow down, low down anyway at 700 meters now, so I'm going to reduce speed to a reasoned 15 meters per second. Also going to deploy the landing gear. These struts are now coming down and they will of course allow me to land gently. It is the, point, the plan anyway. So, reducing speed again and this is why Minmus is so easy to land on. Everything goes really, really slowly. I'm not firing any engines at the moment and I'm just falling very, very slowly, gently falling towards the planet. I have, m ooh, gently, this is quite fast, uh, reducing the speed. You see, even that, that would have been a massive mistake on the moon, but here I can just fire the engines, slow down a little bit, and everything is fine. This is because Minmus is so small, it has a very low amount of gravity. You need hardly any fuel to land on it, and you have a lot of time for any, any corrections. So quite a beautiful scenery here, we're landing over the sunrise on a frozen lake on a strange and alien celestial body. We're keeping speed down to about one meter per second. Here is the, sh the shadow and there we are, touchdown! And at Bass Gurman is the first of his kind to ever set foot on Minmus. Well he's in the capsule still but let's make him set foot. So an EVA here, the same the same stuff we used for getting into the rocket ship in the first place. See, there's not a ladder here. Here there's no gravity, so it can jump really, really high. But when you go to a high gravity planet, you have to take keep in mind that your guys might not be able to jump back up on the rocket if you don't provide a ladder that goes all the way down. Look, he's walking in the very, very low gravity. I think you can even make him run. No, you can't make him run. There's, the gravity is too low. He can jump, though. And then you can see how high you can jump. Their gravity is so, so low. This is a very high jump for a Kerbal. And let's see if he can land. And yes, he can just land. He also has a jetpack, which is quite dangerous to use actually here on Minmus. Because you see, if I use the jetpack, I go really high. In fact, this jetpack is even powerful enough to uh, get into orbit from Minmus. So, look, we, I just did, did two tiny, tiny thrusts from the jetpack and the rocket is receding into the distance. You can get many a kilometer away. There's our shadow coming back down. Now we need to do some jetpack thrust to cushion our descent. Basically a landing with just the Kerbal because if it lands too hard, it will fall and if it really lands too hard, it will die. Anyway, this is a good place to put a flag, I think. Look, we have 95% jetpack fuel left and we're going to plant our flag Yes, we are going to plant our flag here. So, Lorenzo Space Program, my very own space program. And the second flag, the third one, look, there's my face. And let's put this as second triumph, exclamation mark. Minmus. All your moons are belong to us, isn't that quaint? A plant, because the flag has been planted, and my face, because it's mine. We are going to leave this behind for many a generation of Martians to find. We are going to, we're not going to walk back to the rocket, that would be for, for Rubes. We're going to jetpack over there really quickly, and now of course reverse jetpack to break, because otherwise we're just going to smash into our rocket and kill it. Oh dear, yes. So what has to happen now? This is perhaps the most interesting bit of this whole mission is this rocket is going to have to uh, this rocket is going to have to meet up it's going to have to rendezvous with the previous rocket that we left in orbit because even though this still has a lot of fuel in it it doesn't quite have enough to get all the way to the moon it might even have enough to go to the moon but it will not have enough to land on the moon not f not even close so also, it won't have enough thrust to land on the moon, it will just crash. Look, there's our flag in the distance, second triumph. triumph. 
very proud of that. And now we're going to have to get back to our spaceship. Where is it? It is there. So we are going to use the maneuver node system. And I will be showing you this in the next video. So hang on tight. We're going to be rendezvousing with our Minmus ship and then going to the moon. I'll be seeing you guys in the next episode. Thank you for watching Planting Flags. This was Lorenzo. Goodbye.